this video, I wanted to cover off a user requested um, um, topic, which is adding a drive to a RAID. Um, so here I'm running a TVS-H1288X. I'm running QTS on this one. Um, this will be slightly different depending on whether you're running QTS or QUTS Hero. Um, so generally with QUTS Hero, you cannot add a single drive to, say, an existing RAID. Um, if you create a four drive RAID, it's generally always going to be a four drive RAID. You can add another RAID to that to expand it, uh, but with QTS it's a bit more flexible in that. So here I've got uh, Storage Pool 2, uh, which has got a data volume in it. Um, so if I go and look and manage at that storage pool, we can see here that this is comprised of uh, disk bays 5 and 6, which are a couple of 4 terabyte drives, in a RAID 1. So what I want to do is I want to add another drive to this RAID. So what I'm going to do at the top here is I'm going to choose Expand Pool. So here you've got the option, so I'll click Expand Pool. Now I get a couple of choices. So I can say um, create and add a new RAID group, which is typically what you would do with QUTS Hero. Um, but here underneath it with QTS, I do have the extra option to say add new disks to an existing RAID group, which is generally the more efficient way to do it. Um, so here I'm going to convert uh, my RAID 1 with two drives uh, to a three drive RAID 5. So I'm going to choose RAID group 2 is the one I'm going to um, add, uh, add disks to, which is the uh, storage pool 2 I've got there. I'm going to click next. It's going to give me a list of all the drives I've got in here. So I've got a mix of some 12 terabytes and some 4 terabytes. As I use 4 terabytes already, I'm going to stick with 4 terabytes for this change. So if I just choose one extra disk, I could do two at the same time if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm just going to choose disk 7. I'm going to click next. So it's going to tell me my new capacity is going to be 7.27. So effectively switching from a two drive RAID 1, so two drives in RAID 1, um, you're effectively got single disk protection. So one drive fails, um, your data is still okay. And when we change up to three drives, it's exactly the same. You're still protected from the one drive failing. Um, so this extra drive addition that we're doing now is pure capacity. So you're, you're not uh, losing anything with this conversion. Um, it's just going up from um, uh, two drives available effectively worth of capacity. Uh, with one drive worth of capacity being used for the redundancy. Um, so here I've got the option now to just click expand. It's saying um, all of the data on the selected disk will be erased. This warning might worry some users, it's just the new disk that you're adding. It's not the existing disks that you've got, it's just telling you that data is going to be gone. In my case here it's disk 7 that I've selected to add. Um, am I sure I want to continue? So I'm going to click OK and it's going to go off and it's going to expand the storage pool. There we go, started expanding storage pool. Please wait till it's done before expanding a volume. So what that means is it's now given me more capacity, or when it's migrating the RAID anyway, this is going to basically be a RAID rebuild. It's, it's going to take a few, uh, a few hours to complete that. Uh, once it's done this and it's converted it all over to the RAID 5 with the three drives, I will see that my uh, storage pool itself will increase to that new capacity. Now. As standard, the volume will not increase at the same time. So whilst it, your storage pool has got more space, the volume is where your data is going. So you will not get the extra space immediately. What you'll have to do once the uh, storage pool has finished uh, migrating and rebuilding to the new capacity size is you'll see a mismatch between these. So right now you can see they're quite closely matched because I set them to be about the same size. Soon we'll see about seven and a half terabytes on the storage pool, but my volume will stay at that same same step, uh, same size of three and a half terabytes. So the step after you've done that would be to come down here, right click on the uh, main uh, volume and go to manage here. It won't let me do it because there isn't the space done yet. And then you've got the resize volume. So there's a warning right now simply because there's a RAID rebuild happening. Uh, but you'll have a resize volume option and you'll be able to set it to the new capacity. So right now the storage pool 2 capacity isn't showing the new size so I can't expand it. Uh, but once it's done uh, this rebuild which will take a good few hours uh, then it will allow me to jump up to the new capacity. So hopefully that's explained it. Um, it's really easy to do. It's only a few clicks to expand um, the RAID with an existing drive. Uh, so by all means, start off your NAS with just a couple of drives in it that you need for today and buy more drives as and when you need them later. 
Uh, the only downside of it is you will have to do the uh, array rebuild between each of the expansions. Um, you can still use the NAS while it's doing this. Everything is still accessible. You can still use the uh, any data that's stored on that volume. It's just performance may be uh, reduced whilst the rebuild is happening. And to get a status of the, the rebuild and how, how long it's going to take, you can usually click up here. You'll see a running background task and it gives you some information on what's happening. And if you want to speed that up, you can click the cog at the top right here for the global settings, switch to the storage pool that's rebuilding, in my case, storage pool two. It's set to the default medium speed. If I want this to finish faster, but I don't mind my uh, data access to the NAS being a bit slower, I can change this to uh, high speed resync, so it'll go a bit quicker. Or if I really want to make sure that the NAS is still performing at its best, uh, I can change service first, so it will give a low speed rebuild. Um, but it will impact the data transfers and data usage a lot less. So if I was to select that to uh, resync first, are you sure you want to apply? Yes. And we should see in a couple of minutes um, that the resync speed will, will uh, drastically reduce there. So we're seeing that it's going at 53.09 megabytes per second. Um, but after a couple of minutes, it will uh, go much faster and hopefully the, uh, the, the speed, the time left to complete the rebuild uh, will drop down as well. Um, so hopefully you found that useful. Any questions or comments, please do let us know um, down below and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks for watching our latest video from Craig and the YouTube team. If you like that video, then drop us a message in the comment, spot, comment box below. Or you can even contact Craig directly um, at YouTube underscore UK at QNAP.com. Thanks for watching.